I am sick and tired of going to these hearings, which I've been going to for five years, where everybody talks about cyber attacks, and our country still does not have a policy or a doctrine or a, a, a strategy for dealing with them. And we are trying to fight a global battle with our hands tied behind our back. Uh, Director Coates, you have a stunning statement in your report. They will work to use cyber operations to, to achieve strategic objectives unless they face clear repercussions for their cyber operations. Right now, there are none. Is that not the case? There are no repercussions. We have no, we have no doctrine of deterrence. How are we ever going to get them to stop doing this if all we do is patch our software and try to defend ourselves? That anger from Senator Angus King of Maine in the Senate today, his anger over our country staying supine as Russia gears up to try to game another one of our elections. Uh, that was a remarkable moment in today's intelligence hearing in the Senate. It is I think hard to extricate that anger in the Senate from the fact, though, that we are still living with the reverberations of what the Russians did to our last election, as we're now supposedly, or maybe not, gearing up for what they're going to do to our next one. What, what sunk Trump National Security Advisor Mike Flynn one year ago today, when he resigned from the White House, was not just that Flynn had had secret communications with the Russian government. What sunk Mike Flynn a year ago today was that he had had secret conversations with the Russian government, which he lied about. Um, and those conversations specifically had been about sanctions. Right after Christmas, after the election in 2016, the Obama administration levied new sanctions, new punishments against Russia for interfering in our election. That day, Flynn started having secret contacts with the Russian government, which he lied about. Uh, in those conversations, he tried to undercut those sanctions. A few months after Flynn's resignation, we learned about the Trump Tower meeting that had happened during the campaign, which was attended by Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, and Jared Kushner, and a whole bunch of Russians. That was a meeting they did not disclose until the New York Times published an account of it. Their initial, offense, uh, initial defense for why they lied about that meeting, why they didn't disclose that meeting, was that it just didn't seem that important to them, right? All the Russians wanted to talk about was the issue of sanctions. Same thing from Mike Flynn's conversation in the transition. Hmm. One of the other weird Trump campaign contacts with the Russian government that we didn't learn about until months after it happened was Eric Prince. Eric Prince going to the Seychelles Islands and, and meeting with the head of a Russian sovereign wealth fund. Eric Prince also tried to play down that Russian meeting as nothing important. But what did they discuss at that meeting? Sanctions. Russian sanctions. And then Carter Page. Carter Page, the clown prince of this scandal, initially denied but then later admitted under oath that when he went to Russia in the middle of the presidential campaign as a Trump campaign foreign policy advisor, yeah, the issue of sanctions may have come up in passing. Uh, even the, the forgotten Ukrainian peace plan scandal, remember that one? Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, and a Ukrainian lawmaker and a Russian Trump organization guy with extensive ties to organized crime, they meet in New York at a hotel and come up with a secret U Ukrainian peace plan that they reportedly delivered to National Security Advisor Mike Flynn at his office in the White House while he was still there. What was the subject of that plan? Well, among other things, and first among everything else, it was a way to get rid of U.S. sanctions on Russia. Sanctions, 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 sanctions. The anchor that the 2016 election Russia scandal is dragging through our current news and the current behavior of the Trump administration is sanctions. Sanctions, the primary Russian objective of lifting the burden of U.S. sanctions on that country. Sanctions were, was at least partly the subject of every single surreptitious contact between the Trump campaign and Russia that we can document thus far, going right back to Mike Flynn having to leave the White House a year ago today. The Trump administration started making plans to unilaterally drop sanctions on Russia as soon as they arrived in Washington. Congress found out of it, about it, and freaked out. Congress then insisted, legally, that the Trump administration had to enforce and increase sanctions against Russia. The Trump administration then dragged their feet and didn't want to do it, had to be nudged to comply with that law. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson then killed off the office at the State Department that handles sanctions. Just before the State of the Union, a couple of weeks ago, another legal deadline arrived for new Russia sanctions that were supposed to be implemented by the Trump administration. They instead inexplicably declared that there would be no new punishment for anybody buying Russian military equipment, 
which had been the original idea behind those sanctions. The State Department announced that the existence of a U.S. law on this subject, in their estimation, it was deterrence enough against any bad Russian behavior. Those sanctions they were supposed to be implementing were not meant to deter Russian behavior. They were meant to be punishment for past Russian behavior, for them attacking our election. But the State Department decided to let it slide. Trump administration was also required by law to produce by the end of January a detailed report identifying, quote, the most significant senior foreign political figures and oligarchs in Russia. The way this list was supposed to be put together was that it was supposed to take into account uh, high net worth, so very, very rich Russian individuals. It was supposed to consider their, quote, closeness to the Russian regime. It was supposed to consider their specific relationship to Vladimir Putin or other members of the Russian ruling elite. And crucially... To put together that list, U.S. government officials were supposed to determine, quote, any indices of corruption with respect to any of those individuals. They were supposed to come up with this oligarchs list. This oligarchs list was an object of serious fear in Russia. The U.S. government was going to use its resources to compile a list of gazillionaire Russians who became gazillionaires corruptly because of their ties to Putin's regime through, through ill-gotten means, right? Now, there are credible reports that such a list was actually produced by specialist career employees within the U.S. government. That was first reported by the Atlantic Council. We were able to confirm it with a person who had knowledge of the process by which that list was created. We believe that such a list was generated as a U.S. government work product as required by that U.S. sanctions law. But when it came to the deadline, it came time to publish that list, that list was never published. When the oligarchs list sanctions deadline arrived, instead, Steve Mnuchin's Treasury Department literally just put out a list of rich Russians that they had copied from the Forbes magazine billionaires list, plus a directory of people who work in the Kremlin. Putin's government had reportedly been terrified about the actual corrupt Putin-connected oligarchs list that the United States was about to put out. They expected it to have global consequences in terms of the ability of the Putin regime and its enablers in Russia to maintain their wealth, to keep doing what they've done all these years to keep Putin in power. They were shaking in their boots about that list. And again, we have reason to believe that such a list was created by the U.S. government. But somewhere before the deadline, it got submarined and replaced instead with this list that was a joke. Forbes magazine list and the Kremlin phone directory, ha. So much for the, you know, indices of corruption, closeness to Putin, all that out the window. Just give them a list of rich people, forget it. Mike Flynn has been gone for a year as of today. Trump campaign chairman and deputy campaign chairman were both arrested in October and are facing multiple felonies. The White House, even today, right now, is in escalating turmoil over the mishandling of classified information and the elevation of seriously flawed White House personnel to very senior positions. Congress is waking up to the fact that our next elections are less than a year away and there is no clear sense from our intelligence agencies that we are defending ourselves against Russia doing again what they did to us in 2016. But what they did to us in 2016, more than anything, appears to have been motivated by sanctions, by Russia's desire to get relief from sanctions. And the Trump administration is now in charge of that. And the Trump administration right now is behaving pretty inexplicably when it comes to the issue of Russian sanctions. It is amazing where we have been in the past year. It is necessary to look up, to look forward and see what we are bumbling into in the months ahead. But there is also something wrong with where we are right now as well, with what the administration is doing right now. Because what the administration is doing right now on sanctions is what Russia was asking them for all through the 2016 campaign in all those secret meetings. We didn't know it at the time it was happening because those meetings were secret. And that was our excuse then. But now we know that is what Russia asked for. And now, right now in 2018, we can see in real time that they are getting what they wanted and what they asked for from this administration. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.